Okay, and uh, the computer says that we're live, so I'm, I'm just gonna wait a little bit. If you can hear me, <laughs> let me know uh, if you can hear what I'm saying. If you do, uh, put a comment in the in the comment section there, so I know that you everybody's hearing me and everything is okay. Hi, hi, Johan, and hi, Marlena. By the way, how are you guys? <laughs> I hope everything is okay. With you, it's a Sunday evening, so we hear you. Awesome, awesome. What was this day about? By the way, if you're seeing this, I already had my things prepared because I just went out of a live stream from Instagram. If you don't follow me there, it's okay. You can, it can go. I sometimes do live streams there. I sometimes do live streams here. It doesn't matter, right? Oh, happy Alakris. Hello. Ah, oh, Druid Studio. Hi, happy Allah. <laughs> Continuing here from the live stream <laughs> from Instagram. Okay, this is nice. Uh, Gabriella was actually on the live stream on Instagram and I, I commented on her uh, really cool uh, Instagram handle. And uh, I was asking her if she's an actual druid or not, or if she's doing druid, uh, druidy things. Uh, so uh, let's set the thing because um, a lot of you maybe haven't, uh, <laughs> haven't, uh, followed me uh, on Instagram. What I'm doing is I'm testing some new watercolor papers. So this is a uh, Stonehenge uh, cold press watercolor paper, and this is the uh, hey, <laughs> and this is the Stonehenge uh, hot press watercolor paper. And uh, I was trying things on hot press. So this was the hot press paper, and this was the color scheme that I chose. So I did kind of half of it on Instagram live. Um, so. That's it. So I was planning, you know, to finalize all of them tonight in this live stream so that, you know, then I can have some nice pictures and some nice things to, to do. And in the same time, test these papers. OK, because I wasn't sure. I usually use arches just to be super clear that I use arches, uh, watercolor paper. Uh, rarely when I have to do something really fancy, I would use the Hanemula Cezanne paper. Uh, but I'm always on the lookout for new papers and new things. So uh, this is the cold press one. It comes with the blue blue thing. And uh, from the bat, um, it is very similar to the Arches A4. I'm not sure if I have here an Arches A4. Oh, yes, I have an Arches A4. Let's compare it. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, the arches one, yeah, it's a similar size, maybe one centimeter, one centimeter bigger. This is how the arches comes, and you know, it's just a block. This one is a block as well. Um, but what I'm noticing is it's not as structured as the arches, so the arches has way more structure. Uh, on the cold press, um, I'm not even going to talk about the hot press because the arch, uh, the um, rough paper, because the arch is rough paper is really rough. Um, I like it, uh, but what I'm noticing is also it's super white paper, and the problem with super white paper <laughs> is not every imperfection you can see. Uh, so I did this. Um, I started this. This is like a seeded, seeded eucalyptus. How do you call seeded eucalyptus? So let's continue with it. I'm going to do a little bit of this one and then I'm going to uh, switch back to the other one, right? So my my off the bat impressions of this uh, cold press paper. It is much more easier on my micron pens or any pigment pens because it's not so textured, right? So um, that's that. I'm going to make myself some new puddle while I'm talking, some new puddle of ink. Uh, and I'm using cobalt turquoise, uh, which is like a turquoise blue. And then I'm going to mix it with Viridian just to get that uh, blue green, uh, blue green thing, right? Uh, Viridian I have from Daniel Smith, cobalt blue, cobalt turquoise uh, is Windsor and Newton. I like to mix. I always mix colors and brands and stuff. I don't have, um, I wouldn't say I have a favorite color or a favorite brand on watercolors. They're all different. They're all different colors and I use them interchangeably. I also have my whole bind set 
which is pretty nice. So doesn't matter really. Okay, I'm going to continue here. So what I'm doing here is some leaves are the blue, some leaves are with the yellow. And I'm just going to continue adding them. Um, I'm making sure, you know, that I don't have two blue ones that are uh, next to each other. Um, why would you use um, cold press watercolor versus hot press watercolor? So hot press is very useful when you want to have really smooth gradients and really smooth color blends. So when you want your color to blend really good and everything, then you would use um, hot press. Also, it's used a lot in watercolor portraits. I noticed it. Um, because I like my texture and I like the texture that it gives for my flowers, I always use cold press. However, it's not very handy, cold press watercolor, especially when you make prints out of it. <laughs> because of the texture, whenever you're scanning it in, so I'm mixing, by the way, this is dark blue from Schwinke. So whenever you're trying to mix things in, Uh, whenever you're scanning your prints, for example, you wanna you make some watercolor prints or something. Um, the scanner picks up on the um, on the texture and it makes like small black dots everywhere. And then when you try to print it, it it look it looks very bad. It looks like really small black dots everywhere. It's not pretty, right? So what you need to do is you need to take it to Photoshop remove the texture uh, just so that you can make a proper print out of it um, which can be quite time consuming um, if you would use hot press because hot press doesn't have that texture then it becomes much easier to create end products and to create um, like real prints and, and everything yeah so how do I, how do I, what do I usually do is I, I don't like hard edges, so I'm, I'm blending a lot of the colors together, right? And then I'm just going to smooth things around. Um, which ones should I do? Mm, I think I'll do this one, this one blue. So, so far... From a cold press perspective, um, I do go a little bit more around the lines. And let me explain what does it mean. What does going more around the lines than normally? Because cold press pressure paper has this texture, sometimes your hand, if you, especially if you're trying to do fast, uh, fast coloring, um, it gets stuck. So you don't... I have a, a easier way of controlling my brush strokes when it's on cold press paper than on hot press. And on hot press, I kind of miss, I, I go too fast and then I go over the lines and I have an illustrative style. So that doesn't really <laughs> look very enticing, right? <laughs> From that side. Um, cold press and rough paper, because of their nature... Um, it's a little bit more preventive in that in that area, so I don't go uh, above the lines. Like on hot press, I would always miss do miss some parts, and I would do it there. Um, it is what it is. It is really a preference. Another thing for hot press for me is the colors. So the colors can become very dull on hot press. Um, I don't know why exactly. It's probably because, like on cold press paper, the watercolor doesn't really get absorbed that much into the paper, or much slower rate anyway. And on hot press paper, 
it just gets absorbed like very fast because it doesn't have all these ridges and so on and it becomes very smooth and you know watercolor tends to um, uh, dry out much lighter than when you put it on paper and that combined with the cut press quality then you have a disaster in your hand because what I did is I did previously a piece on hot press paper and it took me about five layers to get the intensity of the color that I wanted versus the cold press and that's because in the cold press like you have all these ridges and nooks and crannies and it will just go inside yeah this is the problem when you have cats is you get hairs from the cats everywhere that you have and yeah this is like interesting I am going to do the blue ones because I want them to be dry by the time I go with the yellow um, but what am I noticing with the stone edge versus the um, the arches it's a much smoother paper, even on cold press. It is much smoother. That means that I need to be much more careful how things glide. And I, I'm noticing already that the colors do become a little bit more muted than normal. Um, which is okay. I, I would be very interesting to figure out how it will look like when I'm going to scan it in. Whether I get the same, the same problem or not. And I'm not watching the <laughs> comments yet. Uh, I'm really trying to concentrate here and do it. By the way, after this live stream, I'm going to take some time. I was actually studying. I was supposed to be my study day today, but it turned into a live stream day. And I am uh, studying some, because I'm uh, doing computer science, so I'm studying some system design things. So I just wanted to get this ones done so then I can, uh, so then my, my head can be in the right space so that I can start studying. Um, so that's why I started a little bit earlier with live streams and I'm doing... Uh, another thing that I'm noticing, cold press paper versus hot press paper, like I said, um, the watercolor doesn't dry out as fast on the paper, so then you have some time to mix the colors to remove any hard edges and so on. And this luxury on hot press paper you don't really have. That is the unfortunate part of hot press papers. Uh, but they're very good. So, do I like the Stone Edge? Yes, I do like it. Do I like it? Um, let's let's compare the cold press. Do I like this cold press better than the Arches or the Hanebule? No, I don't. Um, I would still, for cold press, go for that. However, the hot press one is a different story. On the hot press one, I would say I would go for the hot press of Stone Age versus the hot press of um, the Arches, for example. And that is my that's my preference. I would say so far what i'm seeing like on the arches watercolor man that one bleeds like crazy and by bleed i mean the watercolor goes into places where you don't want it or where you didn't even put water <laughs> normally watercolor will follow the water uh with this one no on arches no on the hot press cold press really good still i think the best paper for me is the hanemule again personal preference but it's very expensive much more expensive than this one and it's expensive because you get only 10 sheets of paper for the same price as you would get this one or the uh, arches and it's not very economically savvy right it's very good paper don't get me wrong I'm, I need to make some more puddles here of colors it's very good paper but uh, 
I don't know. I'm only using it for really important things. So, now the question, because I keep talking and talking. What papers do you guys use? You use any special paper? Or you don't care about the paper? That could be also be. Right? Dun, dun, dun. I mean, uh, Gabriela Juarez or Druid Studio. I saw your account. You make really awesome watercolors and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of watercolor and maybe some gouache I saw. So what is your favorite paper then? Do you have a favorite? You might be wondering why am I doing all the green leaves is efficiency sake or efficiency hey mm -hmm. I would say efficiency sake <laughs> um, what's the problem uh, so usually when I buy or when I receive presents I I don't go directly for the big blocks and I know that these particular papers they also have very big blocks like the the 50 centimeters by 50 by 60 or something like very big blocks like uh, triple this size um, and usually the bigger the block the more economical it becomes to buy uh, but when i'm testing papers and that's because i had really bad experience with two papers that i tasted and uh, one of them was the Sennelier papers and the other one was the um, uh, Claire Fontaine. Both of them 100% cotton, don't get me wrong. Both of them. Uh, thank you. I'm currently using Arch Arches Core Press, Capriola. Okay, that's good. It's, uh, it's nice. So at least I'm not the only one using the Arches Core Press. You see, I made too many leaves here. Like, how am I going, how am I going to fix this part? And uh, some leaves, I, yeah, not just cold press, yeah. So I tried the Sennelier, cold press and uh, hot press. Really bad paper. But truth be told, the Sennelier, I tried also their watercolors and that was bad also. Uh, the watercolors, you would, I, I just couldn't get them to mix properly and the colors would become super muddy. And... I can mix a lot of colors like I have this palette that I have here and this is a combination of Daniel Smith, Schmincke and Windsor and Newton. So I can mix any of those together and I don't get these muddy colors but for some reason on the Senelia one they were not so nice. I saw um, uh, some more people also complain on YouTube about the Senelia. But to be honest, their watercolor paper is also pretty, pretty bad. Um, and then the Claire Fontaine, I was like, oh yeah, I can, I can buy it, and um, they have a hundred percent cotton. And you might think that a hundred percent cotton is like, is good or something, but no, it's it's not always good, and um, you have to be very careful. So. The good thing on the Claire Fontaine. Oh, my cat is coming. <laughs> Hi, happy. I uh, don't know if you're gonna see him. I'm hoping that he won't. Okay, let me get these parts out and these parts out. And maybe he wants to stay here and just watch me paint. And I hope he doesn't come and sit on my paper because he sometimes does that. And then. Uh, I have a paper with the cat hair. Okay, he's gonna, he's gonna try. He's gonna try. Hi, hi, happy. I have a Hannah Muller sketchbook. It works really nice. Yes, indeed. Hannah Muller is also really nice. A bit more expensive though. <sighs> and I would think that Hannah Muller, because it's a German brand, I could get it easier in in the Netherlands, but I don't. Okay, happy. I know that you're awake now, but you know. <laughs> Hi. Hi, baby. 
Oh, he really wants petting. <laughs> Usually in the the whole winter I had live streams and then he was just sleeping at this hour when I had live stream around 7. But now he's like, well, it's summer so I'm wide awake. <laughs> Hi, happy. Hi, baby. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> okay, luckily he wasn't wet. He puts his paw there where it shouldn't be. Don't put your paw, baby. Did I tell you? Uh, did I tell you guys the? Oh, now he's starting to eat on my brush. Yeah, and I thought that I'm going to be able to finish this today. <laughs> if it, if this continues, he's going to. He's going to be an impediment here to finish. Hi. Yes, you wanna play? Hi. My other cat is really not behaving like this. She's like a lady. She's really no. <laughs> not on my paper, baby. <laughs> she's like a lady and she doesn't do this. But he's like, I'm going to sit on the paper. Okay, fine. You sit there and you promise me that you're not going to put your paws into the wet pant, okay? Okay, happy? You're gonna promise not to put your, your paws into the wet paint? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna let you sleep there and stay there because I love you a lot. But if you put your paw into the wet paint, I'm going to take you away, okay? Please don't. So what he did last time, I was, I was uh, using India ink uh, because I was learning calligraphy. And I had a very little, little bit of ink on a really tiny uh, part. He, well, this is on my desk and one space to... Oh, okay, my other cat is on my husband's desk. <laughs> she's, uh, she's also one space, okay. And what he did is he put his paw in it. Uh, and then he was all over with black ink. And then he got scared and then I tried to catch him. But then it started running all over my desk. And now I have paw prints with black ink all over my desk. So, uh, yeah, he he does that sometimes. And uh, he gets also scared because he's like, oh my god, what's this color? Why why do I have color on my paws? And I don't want him to do anything. And I'm also, I am also love him so much that I don't want to take him away from here what did we talk about what did we talk about no putting your paws into the ink huh? <gasps> no 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 <laughs> okay this is the hardest part when you're doing a live stream right <laughs> how do you how do you deal with your with the kids and I really need to pick it up. So say bye. Say bye. Bye, happy. <laughs> Come. Come. Mommy takes you. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, he has a blanket right next to me here. He can sit here, but he doesn't want to. He's like... <laughs> he's, a, he's a rascal. I always call it a rascal. No, don't come here. Oh yeah, you're gonna steal my eraser? Is this what you want? There you go. Play with the eraser. At least I placate him with the eraser. I had a different eraser. He completely chewed that one on. And now he's going to take my eraser and run with it. <laughs> okay. So, I kind of did all the blues. Oh, wait. I still need some of this one. And... Arches watercolor paper. Hi, happy. You playing with my stuff? <laughs> Are you upset that mommy took you away from there? Come. <laughs> okay. Um, and I want to do the other parts. And the other parts I'm going to do the graphite tint. Because... Uh, that's the one that I used for this part, right? So let's see how that goes. 
I'm going to do the yellows first and then I'm going to add the red uh, okay he's settling he's settling there he's trying to he's trying to settle on the blanket it's okay so where was I <laughs> review from from a review standpoint I think it's okay I think uh, this paper is actually okay. It's not that bad, right? But of course, you do have to have your favorites. And my favorite is I still I still go a lot to arches. I have so many arches papers. I bought so many, and uh, when the pandemic hit, I was a little bit more afraid that I'm not gonna get my watercolor papers anymore. And then I bought even more. Oh, my other cat comes. Wow. I'm going to be surrounded by cats soon. Uh, so I have quite a lot of arches watercolor paper. And uh, I did try Fabriano Artistico. I like that one also. It's a bit more difficult to get a hand on. Uh... And I only have the small sizes, like the really postcard sizes of the Fabiano. And I'm I'm liking that for very small uh, elements. Uh, Fabiano hot press is also very good. So if I were to compare the Stone Age with the Fabiano, I think uh, they are pretty similar. Um, Fabiano also, also the cold press Fabiano Artistico. It doesn't have that much um, that much tooth, so much more similar to a, a slightly rougher hot press. And I believe that the Stone Age cold press it looks very similar to the Fabriano one. So I'm not saying no to this paper. Uh, it's actually pretty enjoyable to work with. I see. Not that many downsides to it. It's just because it's a little bit smoother. I need to adjust my way of working on it. Uh, the nice part about it is that it comes on a block. So, you know, that means you don't have to stretch it or anything. Um, and it's pretty heavy paper. So heavy weight. So should be fine. Of course, now my cats are drinking from my watercolor water. Because why not? Cats are crazy. Okay. Uh, so I've done this part. And then we're going to do these leaves. And then we're going to go to the other piece, which is on the hot press. I'm going to finalize that one. So... I was watching some other live streams and I noticed that they had music in their background so I need to figure out a way like a safe way without <laughs> copyright infringement to add music to my live streams and uh, I'm thinking maybe I need to I need to in the end get that uh, epidemic sound subscription and actually just listen to some music Sometimes I'm very concentrated and I'm I'm not all uh, listening or sometimes I lose my train of thought and it would be nice to have some music there. Look what happened because Happy stayed on to my paper and, and I have cat hair <laughs> on my paper. Uh, okay. What I would be curious on how many layers of paint can this paper handle until it becomes too much. Because on arches I can add I think even ten layers and it doesn't it doesn't do anything. Um, that's why I really like arches. It's really strong, strong paper. There's no
no problem with it. But I can only see that later on. So far I, I keep adding water and I keep uh, moving my brush around and scrubbing things, right? And I don't see any uh, peels. So sometimes you have the peeling of the watercolor paper. Could be very annoying. I only have cat hair, but it's my own fault with the cat hair because I let happy stay on my watercolor <laughs> paper. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's the stuff. What I like on arches as well, they have this drawing paper, which is more of a cream drawing paper. Really nice. Um, I actually like on, I like to paint or to draw on more uh, tinted paper. Um, I used to draw a lot on craft paper. That was in the past my favorite. But uh, craft paper is very hard to find a paper that can handle watercolors or lots of water. So I used to do just black and white drawings on craft paper and I used to like it a lot more. Um, But yeah, so comparison, in conclusion, I think the Stone Age and the Fabriano, pretty similar. Uh, they're very good papers. Maybe this one, the Stone Age, is a tiny bit more expensive than normal. But I'm pretty sure that you can find it. I have no idea whether you can find the Stone Age paper in... In the United States I have not tried it in here in the Netherlands I could buy it pretty easy from a Dutch supplier so maybe we can ask Johan if he can do a little bit of a research maybe can you tell us if he if it's available on Amazon do you think we can People can get it easier, these papers. Okay, I only have a few and then I, I do the remainder. Yeah, again, the hardest part about live stream is I can't really move my paper, so drawing upside down is sometimes difficult. <laughs> it's, like, it's much easier when you're pulling the water towards you or the color towards you, and you have much more control, but doing it against the flow is not necessarily... My biggest favorite. Stonehenge paper is from brand Legion paper. Okay. Uh, it's a New York based company. Okay, so... Okay, so then people from United States can very easily get it. That is cool. Thank you. New York based paper. That's nice. That's cool. Uh, the colors can be blended pretty nicely on paper, so, and that has to do with the fact that it doesn't get absorbed so fast, so, you know, I can do really cool blending on the paper. I'm gonna add the red. So that means that what I bought, maybe in America it's even cheaper. Because then you don't have to pay the taxes or the import taxes, right? So then 
it should be able to be cheaper there you're buying it local than uh, than this one it's nice Mm. I like how the red contrasts really with the blues and that stuff. It's really nice. And this is a seeded eucalyptus. Usually the seeds are also green, obviously. But I'm taking artistic liberties with it, okay? <laughs> because I want to have some artistic liberties. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be anything. I'm just trying to finalize it uh, 1935 and then we can go to the to the other one to the hot press because that one is an even more interesting uh, color scheme okay did I did I do all yeah so I'm liking it. I'm going to definitely finish this uh, this one. And if I were to say so far, um, it's a good good alternative to Bold Fabriano and uh, Arches. Okay, it's not not a very look. I made in here some intentional errors because I wanted to see how lifting works. See if if I can lift color and I can lift it. So lifting works pretty good. I went a little bit above the line. Uh, and this is a hard, like usually blues are hard to lift. Let me be very clear. Like yellows are very easy to lift. Blues are usually harder to lift. Okay. Um, this was the cold press tonnage watercolor paper. Pretty impressed by it. Pretty nice. Thank you, honey. For buying it yeah so buy it on amazon.com now let's go to the hot press uh, i'm doing it in a reverse order than i'm do i was doing it on uh, instagram live uh hot press comes in red it's really nice because you can distinguish between the two um and i really like this this part on top where it's actually uh embossed i really like the the nice touch right uh, 15 white seven by seven by ten inch or 17 78 centimeters by 25.40 it's definitely they did it first in inches and then they, they thought how do we transform things in centimeters okay um so i'm going to use it like this oh you can you can use it like this let's see if it uh yeah let me center it and then I'm going to use my graphite tint, uh, primarily graphite tint for everything. Uh, so I'm going to have it there. And let's do this. This is a really nice uh, composition. What I was trying to say is that this size, it's not very good for reads. I mean, I did a read because it was something that I could do really fast so I could get going. But... It's not really uh, what you should be using for it because you don't have enough space in the middle. Like a wreath needs to be, could, could be round or, round or oval, but it needs to have enough space so that you can write something in it. Uh, but this one doesn't, doesn't have enough space. So that is the, that is the point. But just because we have a smaller size because the stone age has also bigger size uh, at least i asked my husband and he says oh yeah they have bigger sizes so just going to assume that they are bigger sizes again i have to switch men mentally when i'm switching to hot press i have to mentally switch and to slow down because hot press is uh it, the um, brush glides very much over the paper and what happens when when it glides is that it becomes very easy to make mistakes and very easy to go above the lines and i hate the most going around the lines and because i'm not doing here uh, 
the loose watercolors. I'm just doing illustrative style and I like my illustrations to be clear and clean because otherwise I freak out and maybe that's my OCD talking. Um, yeah. So let's talk about what, what happened more this week. Uh, I don't know when the time went, to be honest. It was one of those weeks that all of a sudden it's end of week. And I was like, I don't understand this. I don't understand how this happened. <laughs> um, yeah. Staying at home, doing work because I, I do work during the day. Lots of Zoom meetings. And not a lot of other stuff, to be honest. Um, and then the end of the week was here. That's it. Um, yeah. Pretty boring week. But the one thing that I'm super happy about, what happened is that the weather is super nice. So I was out outside. Um, I could just go with a normal hoodie on. Uh, I didn't need my jacket anymore. Which is like a um, far cry from uh, what was like maybe a week ago. When it was snowing and hailing and snowing and hailing. That was really uh, much more terrible. And yeah. Now actually you could. You could go out and the birdies are out and, you know, everything was super nice. So, I was pretty impressed by the weather. It made like a U-turn from <laughs> what it used to be to now. Because literally it was snowing a week ago. And not even... A Less than a week ago. My flower survived the snow and the hail and everything. Um, so I have tulips and hyacinths in my garden. They all survived, which is really nice. Uh, because I was a bit afraid that, that you know, all of a sudden it's going to be super cold and my flowers are just going to die horribly. Uh, but it didn't. So that's really cool. Okay, let me try this one. It's gonna be blue. So, mental switch is done. Uh, one other thing, hot press. This hot press, really good, man. Comparing myself with other hot presses, doesn't really compare. I only found another hot press that I really like, but it was much more difficult to work with. But at least it wasn't bleeding. And that is the Etcher Lab. Uh, I have lots of their notebooks from Etcher. And the Etcher Lab notebooks were uh, there. And were really nice. Um, however. The problem with Etcher. Is that. It's a notebook. So you can't really stretch it. And then it curls. So. You can do it for very tiny illustrations or for tests, but you can't do it for like really water work or anything, you know? That is the, that is the thing, okay? I'm trying to do more at a time, just to save on time and on uh, having to reload my brush. Because my brush can hold quite some water, although it's a 04 nib uh, for the brush, 04 size. It holds plenty of water and it's even a synthetic brush. It's an Escoda Versatil. That's really nice. Okay, 
let's do some green ones this will be nice here Oh, hi, Happy. Did you come back? Hi, how are you? My Hap, Hap Monster is back. He's like, I'm back. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, make sure. Oh, no, you're not going to play with my watercolors, are you? Hi. <laughs> Okay, yay, we can we can walk around happy. We can work around happy. Yes. I even saw my neighbor today. She was uh she was with a broom in her hand. She was cleaning out the garden and the the leaves and everything. She was like making sure that all preparations are done. Okay, happy. Are you gonna promise me? No. Oh no! Yes, you're gonna put your hands on it. No, 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 no. Or pause. Hi. No. Oh, fuff, fuff. There you go. Sit there. Please sit there. Okay. Thank you. No, he's coming back. <laughs> I just can't. It's. He's, I'm not gonna get rid of him or anything. But he needs to be careful because. My only worry is that he will put ink on his paws. Uh, no, don't eat that. Don't eat that. Don't eat the ink, Javi. And the ink could be quite h harsh on, on cats, right? I mean, I don't want him to get sick or anything. Hi, happy. Yeah, you're sitting, sitting there? <laughs> he's such a sweetie but such a big rascal so what I'm trying now with this I, I put a lot more water than I normally would because I want to see if that bleeds if that doesn't bleed then it's really good hot press paper so I put lots of water and now I'm going to blend it in with the other color so the blend looks really nice and Happy is now trying to eat my Danica seal spins. It's okay, Happy. He's gonna play with them. <laughs> so I got my Danica seal uh, catnip, catnip paint. Yes, Victor. Yes, catnip paint. <laughs> I think that's why they are like looking at it and and <laughs> trying it. <laughs> and now he's looking. You guys want to see? I got my. Um, so I participated in a kickstart last. Hi, happy. And it was for Danica seals, and I got my pins. And first of all, I am impressed by how big they are. Look how big they are. Look how nice they are. I bought two pins, and I've been waiting since I think November last year because it took her a long time to make them. This is what the Kickstarter does. I'm really loving it. I'm gonna give it to my cat again to play because he likes to play with them apparently. There you go. And then maybe he leaves me alone. <laughs> so I don't have to. Okay, so the color didn't bleed. That's very good. That's very good for a hot press. Um, I was afraid that if I'm gonna use a lot of water, the color is gonna bleed where there is nothing. So that's very good, to be honest was not expecting this. How is it Victor? How is Pepper doing? Is he okay? How would Pepper feel like with happen uh, happened it? Do you think they will get along? Or they wouldn't? <laughs> He's sitting behind behind the monitor now, and I'm hoping he's not gonna move my monitor or anything. It's uh, really uh, an interesting kid to get. Oh, he's coming back! He's coming back! Hi, happy. You wanna play? You wanna play with mommy? Or did you have enough play? <laughs> 
Okay, let's do some more green. I think they like the, I mean, I like the smell of my paints and I think they like it also because it smells pretty, I don't know how to put it, like um, earth after rain. Can I express like that? Like it's earth after rain and um, yeah, it, it smells really nice. So I think that's why they're so attractive to the paint. And uh, I don't know how to make them not attractive to the paint because uh, they're gonna eat it. <laughs> uh -huh. And this is the other one. But we'll see. Took my office chair, so now I'm standing. But yes, I think they would get along. <laughs> oh, Pepper. <laughs> so no more office chair for you. I'm so sorry, Victor. But, you know, he's your kid. So um, my kid does the same. He steals my stuff and he sleeps on my chair. And I just can't... I can't take him away from that. It's, It will be cruel. It will be very cruel if I need to take him away. I mean, he likes to sit on my chair as well. Especially since my chair has this uh, memory foam thingies. <laughs> and uh, he really likes the memory foam. So I'm going to gonna see. By the way, yesterday I been to my first shop in ages. I mean, I have stopped even going to the supermarket in months now. Because I order everything online. And yesterday I went to my first shop. And it was a pet shop because I went there with my husband so that we buy some more uh toys um our cats kind of destroy the toys pretty often and uh we just needed some new toys so we bought in it we bought some more blankets because also some of the blankets got a bit destroyed because they like to scratch on them uh and i was in a shop yes <laughs> i haven't been in a shop in like forever um was almost nobody there so that was okay <laughs> um it wasn't crowded at all or anything it was a very big shop i almost didn't remember how how it used to be like if it was ever crowded at the pet shop or not uh but it was really nice i bought i bought quite some cool things spent all my money as usual because for my kids i would spend all my money uh, my husband was there also. Um, they had some pretty cool things there. Uh, by the by the pet shop. And I think they are allowed to be open because they are considered essential or essential, whatever businesses you could tell. Um, you might wonder why they are essential because your pets also need things to eat and to do right it's not like uh, uh pets can live off human food or something <laughs> they need special things right so yeah i think that's why they let the pet shops open haven't been there i was a bit scared to go but when i was there i was okay and i also had to bike there so it took me quite a while to bike <laughs> it was really nice okay uh, I'm going to do some more. Uh, let me consider it. So I could also do this one with the blue. I don't know. Do you guys do you guys still go to the shops? Because I feel like I haven't seen the inside of a shop in like so long, almost a year now. I mean. The only shop I used to go was the supermarket, but now I don't even go there. So, and maybe the McDonald's sometimes when you go to the McDonald's to do an order. But is McDonald's really considered a shop? I don't know. I would say they're not really a shop. It's not like you browse around and you try things out and you buy things. Uh, I think McDonald's is more different type of shop okay i'm really liking it. i think i'm going to start using this stone age paper as the paper for 
a lot of my pieces that require hot press because it's really good hot press paper. I am pretty much impressed by it. Um, so, what else have we done? We've um, we are in a in a process of um, doing things to our home. So I want to change my garden and I want to replace the hedge. We we'll have a very big hedge, but it's kind of one and a half meters width. Width. Um, it's pretty big and that takes away from the size of the garden because especially since I noticed that my garden is kind of my only safe haven especially during these times when I I go out and I listen to the birdies and um, I really do need the space so we're trying to we're trying to do something with the hedge and uh, to just put a fence and to put flowers on the fence and to remove that one and a half meter of, of very big hedge. Um, so, yeah, we're making strides. I was actually thinking of um, whether or not it would be useful to... No. Yeah, to have solar panels. So we kept getting bombarded by all these guys that come like, oh, you guys want to have solar panels, solar panels, this, solar panel, that. We made a calculation. From a technical standpoint, we would not be gaining anything. Because they say, yeah, if you have solar panels, the electricity is going to cost you a lot less. However, our electricity cost is really already very low. Because um, we're not people that actually utilize a lot of electricity and we, we mostly stay on our computers and don't even turn the lights on. So usually our electricity consum consuming is uh, below one person average consume instead of being like two persons or two and a half persons. So from their claim that, you know... We would be um, gaining anything. I seriously, seriously doubt it. However, might be some truth to it. I don't know. Um, but I'm thinking, okay, we would be more uh, climate friendly, maybe. Um, if we would do this. So, yeah, I'm still considering. There are multiple ways to do this, so you don't have to necessarily pay for it. Uh, you can pay a little bit more each month and then you kind of technically pay it off in 20 years or 30 years. That that could be one of the investment costs that you do. Um, so that could be something. Uh, I'll I'll have to think about it. I I know that some of my colleagues already did it, uh, and they put uh, a lot of panels on their roof, and they technically have uh, more panels than they, what they need. So I'm I'm not sure if I should do that or not. But yeah. Okay. We're we're closing in here to the end of this beautiful beautiful piece. I really like the color scheme on this one to be honest. It's my favorite one, even more favorite than than uh, the one on the cold press. So I think the next next test will be I'm going to scan this one in and see how that looks. Okay, uh, this one needs to be with some bread, 
So let's do the red berries. So I'm hoping summer comes soon. We can start having uh, barbecues and grills outside. And if I manage to make my garden a little bit bigger, then it will be much nicer. Um, but what I don't want to have, why do I prefer colder weather? Because in the summer it can be pretty hot and I'm not sure if I'm ready for it. I would like to be in perpetual uh, spring, if possible. Where is this type of weather? Like up to 20 degrees Celsius. <laughs> uh, it's not cold, not too warm. <laughs> Nothing too extreme. And that will be very good for me. Otherwise, I know that I'll be suffering a lot. And with the prospect of us having to work from home even towards the summer. I don't know if that's my best thing that I want to do. <laughs> okay, the last berries, guys. And it's officially 8 o'clock. <laughs> if you want to see, I, I guess, sometimes I might do like I did today. I started on Instagram with my live stream. And then I continued on YouTube. So I might be doing this more often because I like to work on both platforms so if you don't follow me on instagram please go ahead and give me a follow and this way at least you'll be notified whenever i'm doing instagram live streams and uh you know you can see you can see some different sides of things oh hi happy did you decide to come again <laughs> yes he decided to come again <laughs> Okay, so final thoughts. Uh, really impressed with the hot press watercolor. Um, so this is again, for those of you who joined, Stone Age hot press watercolor. I'm really impressed. It didn't bleed at all. It behaves just like a normal watercolor I would expect it to behave. Um, hi, Happy. Do you also like the watercolor paper? Do you? Yeah? Is it your favorite? Or is watercolors your favorite? Yeah? Do you want to eat them now? <laughs> He's like, I, I want to sit here, but I don't know where I'm going to sit. Let me, let me make some room for him. He's sitting there in a corner. Oh, so dejected. <laughs> right? Uh, cold press, it is very similar. It is lesser textured than Arches. Uh, and then Hanemole, it is very similar to cold press from um, Fabriano Artistico. It's nice. Wouldn't be my favorite, but it is a million times be better than uh, Clairefontaine cold press and then San Elia compressed. Those ones are like the worst of the worst. So, so far, I enjoyed this process and I enjoyed this piece. I thank you so much for staying with me uh, till the end and for listening. I hope to see you on my next live stream. It's going to be Wednesday. I usually have live streams on Wednesday and on Sundays. Uh, and hope to see you guys. Yeah, there. Um, and... Have a wonderful evening going forward. Okay? Bye. Bye, Victor. Bye, Marlena. Bye, Gabriela. And bye, Johan.